So we're going to start with the Dirac equation because we've studied so far about the clean Gordon equation, right? So we could study about the clean Gordon field. We quantize the clean Gordon field, but the clean Gordon field cannot represent a particle with a spin. Okay, so a fermionic field that is the field of fermions has to be represented by the uh, part uh, by the Dirac field. Okay, has to be represented by the Dirac field. So first we'll have to um, because the Dirac field is what it has the spin R, which in turn represents the spin of the particle. So now first we'll study about the Dirac equation. So this is your Dirac equation. Okay, so here you see the Dirac equation. So it can be thought of the taking of the square root of the plane Gordon uh, equation. Okay, so we have these new quantities in this Dirac equation called these gamma matrices. Okay, so here you can see the gamma matrices and this derivative you earlier see right so this derivative we wrote out earlier this kind of a derivative this is the derivative in space time so the first component we said is the time component right so x we can write as x naught or we write it directly as t and next we have the spatial components okay so next we have the so we've already seen this kind of a derivative So we yeah, I can write it as gradient itself, right? So I can write the, the symbol grad symbol. Okay. So that is what is written out here, and it's written in shorthand here. So what are these new quantities called these gamma matrices? So these gamma matrices are nothing but they can be written in terms of the Pauli uh, spin matrices. So when we solved about so in, uh, in your quantum mechanics, when you studied about spin half particles, you'd have worked out the Pauli spin matrices, right? So you can check it up in any quantum mechanics book, Griffiths, uh, Schiff, or P.M. Matthews. All these books will have these Pauli sigma uh, matrices. And the gamma matrices is written, can be written in terms of the Pauli sigma, uh, Pauli spin matrices. So gamma naught, okay, so gamma nu is, one part is the gamma naught, right? The, so that is, a, um, and then, then we have the spatial components, which are represented by this. Sigma matrices, sigma matrices. So here you can see, so the four vector, and then so this is not a four vector, but we are writing it in this notation. So any four vector, we write it in two parts, right? So we write the first time part, and then we write the spatial part. So likewise, we are here we are writing it in a similar notation. We first write the gamma naught, which is this quantity. I is your identity matrix, and this sigma i is your three gamma matrices. So this is your gamma matrices written out. Um, so this is the gamma matrix is written out here. So sigma i is your uh, sigma Pauli sig spin matrices. So now let's go into uh, what the solutions are. Let's discuss the solutions. So the so the Dirac equation has solutions of this form. So it has a plane wave solution. So this part here you can see the exponential. It's a plane wave solution. Okay, and it has a separate spin r component. Okay, it has a separate spin r component. So when um, when we say plane waves itself, it, it should immediately tick your brain that uh, the plane waves solu solutions are the solutions of a harmonic oscillator. So this comes into the picture when we quantize the Dirac field, right? So when we, when we have a plane wave solution, we can write it in terms of the harmonic oscillator. We can write it in terms of the, and we can write the solutions in terms of the uh, creation and annihilation operators of the harmonic oscillator. So the plane wave solutions bring the harmonic oscillator into picture. And when we want to quantize the Dirac field, we write the so the field, the psi, the field psi in terms of the creation and annihilation operators, just like we how we did in the uh, plane when we quantize the plane Gordon field. Okay. So uh, in addition, we have these spinners. So the, here you can see the, that the there are four spinners, okay, there are four spinners. So U and U1, okay, so these spinners correspond to positive energies. Okay, so these spinners correspond to positive energies. U3 and U4 correspond to spinners of negative energy. So you, the Dirac equation has negative energy solutions. So initially, they uh, didn't know how to interpret it. Okay, so the negative energy was thought to be so many things, but later we dis they, it was discovered that just like we have an electron, we have a positron, which is a antiparticle, right? So that negative, so the negative energy solution corresponds to the antiparticle. Okay, so that is what it is. So uh, we have uh, 
u1 u2 which corresponds to spin up and spin down okay so two spins are there for a fermion spin a spin up and spin down and u3 and u4 corresponds to spin up and spin down of the negative energy solution of the uh, dirac equation okay now just going to introduce this concept of helicity so just like i said we have spin up and spin down right so i'll represent spin up as positive and spin down as negative and here for the antiparticle i'll so we'll start calling the antiparticle as b okay so the antiparticle that is the negative energy solution spinner it has a spin up and spin down now helicity is a operator that projects the spin onto the direction of the motion right here you can see the spin projected onto the direction of the momentum so when you do that if you get a value plus 1 okay then we call them right handed and if you do you get a uh, uh, value minus 1 then we call it left handed okay so these actually categorize the spinners and we, we will eventually uh, theorists today consider them as separate kind of particles itself left handed and right handed particles so we'll come to see all that later on and now another quantity we will introduce is chirality so chirality is handedness so it's like you reflect if you re, it's like a reflection of coordinates so if you reflect a coordinates if you uh, and and there is no change there is, then it's said to uh, exhibit a chiral symmetry so here we have chiral projection operators so these projection operators uh, project the left handed and right handed chiral components so we'll come to see what these are uh, later when we um when we encounter weak interactions okay so when we encounter weak interactions we will come to see what they are so now let's start out uh, into the dirac field so we we'll start out with the quantizing the dirac field so the lagrangian the dirac field will be written out this way so we will write the lagrangian this way the field i bar now i am writing uh, the field phi and phi bar because just like how we wrote psi and psi star so here psi and psi bar just like how we wrote psi and psi star in quantum mechanics psi and psi star was psi star was the complex conjugate right so here also we have a comp so we moved so here the dirac equations has uh, plane wave solutions in terms of the complex variable right so the dirac field is a complex uh, scalar field okay so it's a complex scalar field and just why this way because we introduce psi and psi star uh, so that the value of the field eventually when you multiply both uh, turns out to be positive right so here also it's the same procedure so psi and psi bar uh, is for the same reason okay so now again we will uh, expand the field right I write the field in terms of the so the quantizing of the field is done by imposing the canonical commutation relationship of your linear harmonic oscillator and this is the mode expansion okay so this is the fourier mode expansion written in terms of the creation and annihilation operator so just like we did for the clean gordon field okay so i'll explain what these terms mean so you're going to encounter uh, keep encountering this uh, throughout our field theory even when you go to string theory that whenever we see um, next we'll see the maxwell field so the maxwell field will be written uh, can be written again the maxwell field uh, will have the field a okay the maxwell uh, vector potential a can be written has solutions of of a plane wave solution and therefore the harmonic oscillator enters the picture 
and we can quantize it by writing the solution in terms of the quantized quantum harmonic oscillator right the in terms of the creation and annihilation operators so what guarantees are writing of it that way will be that they uh, the the fields obey the commutation relationship of your harmonic oscillator okay so you impose the commutation relationship just like we did in your clean gordon field okay so so if you want a detailed work about of uh, the procedure we are detailing so we should we should look up how we quantize the clean gordon field we first did the uh, we first solved the harmonic quantum harmonic oscillator using the ladder method and then we uh, uh, wrote the plane wave solutions of the clean gordon field in terms of the quantized uh, harmonic oscillator expanded in terms of the fourier mode okay so that is what we will do every time okay so to quantize any field we will that's what we'll do so just like we said in the beginning of the course that your ability to do physics right so these are really advanced courses right so these are really advanced topics and uh, it involves just treating the harmonic oscillator in increased levels of abstraction okay so in increased levels of abstraction so i'll just write this out and explain what these terms mean So as I said, the bar here denotes the that it's the so we're dealing with the complex scalar field. So just like we had psi psi star, we have psi psi bar. Okay, so it guarantees us for a for us a positive norm, right? So when we work out anything, it guarantees. Okay. So now let me explain the terms here. Okay, so so the terms here. Let's uh, a right. So a a dagger. So a dagger is your creation operator. Okay. So this is your creation operator. So in the clean Gordon field, we had used a plus. So here we are going to use a dagger. Okay. So a dagger is your creation operator, and it is the creation operator corresponding to the spinner. U. Okay, so here see, uh, you can see that uh, it is written next to U, right? So the spin R U, you know, it is uh, uh, so this corresponds to the spin R U, and <coughs> again A. So A is your we wrote A minus, right? So this was your annihilation operator. Here it's just the we're just writing uh, writing it as A, okay, and Okay. And B is similarly B is the so this is dagger, right? So let me this is your dagger. This is your dagger. So dagger is different from plus. Okay, so dagger. So you know what a dagger is, right? So this is plus and this is a dagger. So this is your creation operator, and this corresponds to the next spinner. Okay, so then this corresponds to the next spinner. So this is for V, the spin R V, and this is for U, right? So this is for U. Okay. So again, what as I said, what guarantees this is that the these fields now obey the canonical commutation relationship of your harmonic oscillator, right? So so here, let me write it around terms of the uh, Anti commutation relationship. So, this is your anti commutator bracket. Okay. 
so the dagger just indicates the hermitian conjugate okay so the dagger just indicates the hermitian conjugate so there is going to be uh, two delta functions here okay so there is going to be two delta functions x and y are space time points okay so x and y are space time points and a and b okay so a and b will correspond to the spinar index you get okay so a and b will come correspond to the spinar index so so this is what guarantees are writing of the uh, writing of the fields in terms of the uh, creation and annihilation operators expanded in fourier mode okay of the harmonic oscillator the dirac field is written out this way and that they obey and uh, it is guaranteed that we uh, this way of writing is warranted by it obeying the commutation relationship of your harmonic quantized uh, quantum harmonic oscillator so this is the quantization of your dirac field 